recent study have found a supplements can help patients with severe COVID-19 pneumonia from dependence on ventilators and facilitate their recovery. I'm Dr. Jing Duanyang. First, let's briefly review the process of the new coronavirus infection. The vast majority of people infected with the new coronavirus can recover at home. However, a small number of older people, particularly those with pre-existing chronic illnesses, may develop more severe COVID pneumonia. This illness can include diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, as well as those with compromised immune functions. These patients might need the intensive care unit where they will be placed on a ventilator and are given a series of medication. A small percentage may even lose their lives. How long does such a process generally take? It takes about seven days for a person infected with a new coronavirus to have symptoms of fever and cough and a diagnosis of pneumonia by CAT scan. If the pneumonia continues to develop, acute respiratory distress syndrome will appear after two days. The patient will need to use a ventilator and the risk of death is pretty high. Why do some people get to this point, but others don't? First of all, let's look at why the elderly are at high risk of contracting the new coronavirus and are suffering from severe COVID-19 pneumonia. One of our body's most important antioxidants is glutathione. Its function is to eliminate the excessive production of free radicals, which are produced in the body's fight against both viral and bacterial infections. These free radicals are necessary for the process of killing virus and bacteria. Still, if there's not enough glutathione in the body to clear them up timely, free radicals will damage our tissues and organs. This is known as oxidative stress or free radical storm. The capacity to produce glutathione is reduced in the elderly, resulting in sufficient glutathione to clean up free radicals, causing dysregulation of the immune response. Therefore, once viruses or bacteria infect the elderly, their illness will be more severe with a higher mortality rate. Our future videos on immune senescence and inflammation will explain in detail that as people grow older, their function of producing antioxidants becomes weaker. The number of immune cells decrease. Therefore, when the new coronavirus infects this group of people, the death and reduction of immune cells were even more severe. But now for our current methods for preventing and treating COVID-19 enhance immune regulations or increase the number of immune cells, such as monoclonal antibodies, which neutralize the virus. Some treatments further suppress the immune system's response, such as use dexamethasone to control cytokine storms. Some methods are entirely dependent on the body's immune function, such as vaccines. What should we do? Is it possible for us to correct the body's immunity by supplementing glutathione? It is possible, but a supplement is not the glutathione, but its predecessor, an acetocysteine, or in short, NAC. Why? Let's first take a look at what cysteine is. Cysteine is a semi-essential amino acid. It exists in many high-protein foods, such as beef, chicken, eggs, and whole grain. Combined with glutamate and glycine, cysteine forms glutathione, an essential antioxidant for maintaining immune function. Under normal circumstances, the human body can produce enough glutathione. But in the elderly with viral and bacterial infections, the amount of glutathione in the body may not be enough. An acetocysteine, NAC for short, is a supplement for cysteine. The body does not produce it, nor does the food. It plays a role in supplementing cysteine when body needs to make a large amount of glutathione. For a long time, 
NAC has been used to relieve liver damage caused by overdosing paracetamol, a medication used to treat fever and mild pain. It can be directly aerosolized and inhaled into the respiratory tract to resolve mucus in the lungs. Most importantly, NAC can enhance the immune system, inhibit virus replication, and reduce inflammation. Studies have shown that taking 600 mg NAC by mouth twice a day can normalize the cellular immunity of the elderly. NAC or NAC can reduce influenza, the severity of its symptoms and duration of the sickness. Then, can NAC be anti-COVID-19? Let's analyze it. First of all, NAC has an antiviral function. Coronavirus is RNA virus. It leads to end human cell to replicate itself through an important protein compound known as NF-kappa-B pathway that controls DNA transcription. Studies have found that NAC can precisely inhibit NF-kappa-B to reduce the replication of a human influenza virus in the long epithelial cell, and it can also inhibit HIV and respiratory sensitile virus. Therefore, NAC has the potential to inhibit the new coronavirus. In addition, the replication of the new coronavirus requires a protease called the MAM protease, MPRO. NAC may inhibit the activity of this MPRO by binding to the particular part of the protease, thereby directly inhibiting the replication of the new coronavirus. Furthermore, NAC can also reduce the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Secondly, NAC can reduce the cytokine storm in patients infected with the new coronavirus. The higher the proportion of neutrophils is, the more serious the condition. NAC can reduce the oxidative stress response of neutrophil by supplementing glutathione, thereby regulating the production of cytokine. Studies have found that taking NAC 600 mg twice per day for 14 days can achieve this effect. With oral administration of 1200 mg, NAC can significantly reduce neutrophil oxidative burst induced by candida ablicans. At the same time, NAC will not damage neutrophil's other antibacterial functions. In severe COVID-19 patients, SARS-CoV-2 infection often leads to reduction of lymphocytes, especially T cells. But the large doses of oral NAC, 1200 mg twice a day, can increase the level of glutathione in lymphocytes to improve the acquired immune response. After a person is infected or vaccinated, antibodies produce depend on adaptive immune response. Oral NAC can also reduce the incidence of pneumonia. Finally, intravenous injection of NAC reduces the mortality of patients with severe COVID-19. Here we introduce two published case reports. A 54-year-old male COVID-19 patient has high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia, and obesity. He has a severe symptoms and a multiple system organ damages after being infected with new coronavirus. The doctor gave the patients a low-dose oral HCQ, total 600 mg combined with intravenous NAC, a looting dose of 75 mg per kilometer body weight for 4 hours, then 35 mg body weight for 16 hours. Then it is a 70 mg per kilometer for 24 hours, although the patients had pulmonary embolism and required ventilator assistance, the patient was released from intensive care unit on the 7th day and discharged from the hospital on the 12th day. Another 64-year-old male COVID-19 patient suffered from respiratory failure on the 13th day despite receiving antibiotics antiviral and ventilator support after admission. The patient inhaled a large dose, 10 to 15 grams of NAC for 11 days. The effect was significant. The hospital discharged the patient after 26 days of mechanical ventilation and 46 days 
of inpatient treatments. Recently, a study proved that intravenous neck treatments significantly improved condition of 10 COVID-19 patients who were heavily dependent on respirators. It also considerably reduced inflammation biomarkers such as C-reactive protein and ferritin and improved lung function. In the end, eight patients were able to go home and the conditions of the remaining two patients also improved. This clinical practice further proved that the effectiveness of NAC in the treatment of COVID-19. Because the vaccine's effectiveness is waning and the coronavirus new mutation is happening, the use of NAC is very reasonable and imperative to improve immune function. Now there are more clinical trials using NAC to treat new coronavirus. Meanwhile, what shall we do? For most people, the balanced and healthy diet may be enough. For those with high risk occupations such as healthcare professionals, may need to take certain precautions. Especially for the elderly people with chronic illnesses and the people with weakened immune system, you can consider taking NAC 600 mg orally twice a day after discussing with your doctor. When symptoms such as fever or dry cough occur, you may take NAC 1200 mg twice a day to relieve the symptoms and accelerate the recovery of viral infection. The intestine is the largest immune organ we have, carrying 70% of all lymphocytes in the body. The small intestine absorbs oral neck and the interaction between epithelial cells and immune cells may strengthen our immune system against viral infections. Does neck have any side effects? Of course, some patients have side effects on digestive systems such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, etc. But otherwise, it is relatively safe. Once the patient has clinically diagnosed pneumonia or dyspnea, the doctor has to decide how to use intravenous NAC in addition to conventional treatments. Okay, let's summarize today's content in one sentence. NAC is a precursor of body's crucial antioxidant glutathione. It can regulate the body's immune function, suppress cytokine storm, and accelerate recovery of COVID-19 patients. Finally, I want to thank Dr. Zhong Chen Shi of Baylor College of Medicine and his colleagues for their excellent review paper. It is an essential reference for this video. Here's the link to the original article. Thank you for watching our show. If you like it, please give thumb up, share, and subscribe. Health, happiness, and harmony. See you next time. Thank you.